Have you ever wondered how Node.js was built back in 2009? Do you really know how the Chrome JavaScript engine V8 works alongside the powerful cross-platform asynchronous I.O. LibUV? Or going even further, have you noticed how many JavaScript runtimes such as Bun, Dino or Cloudflare workers are going hype nowadays? Is it that easy to build a JavaScript runtime from scratch? Well, let's find out. Today, you're gonna build a complete JavaScript runtime that recreates how the Node.js system works, writing custom functions, integrating C++ functions, and using even threads. Ah, and I brought surprises for you. I've prepared a complete cloud environment for you to develop new features for your JavaScript runtime without having to set up a C++ environment or even have to compile the V8 and LibUV library. Hello my friend, welcome to the most special video on this channel. Today I'll teach you how to create your own Node.js by using the same components using in the original project. You're gonna use Chrome's JavaScript Engine V8, LibUV as our event loop and threading manager and a lot of C++ as the original project uses. But wait, 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 don't worry, aren't you a C++ developer? Neither do I. I'll lead you to use the simplest code we can build and I might even not use the best practices to make it easier for you to understand how the code works and how the magic behind the most popular JavaScript runtime of the moment works. I'll introduce the Node.js main components and how the system works. And then I'll start building the project with you from a template I made to save time and pay attention to what is really important for us in this class. This is the first video on the whole YouTube platform teaching you about how to create your own JavaScript runtime in practice. I really hope you like it. The hardest part to prepare such a class for you is preparing the environment. Compiling C++ library as V8 and LibUV takes time and that's why I bypass all struggles for you. For all our examples, you have a virtual environment, a git pod with all working environments with all dependencies already compiled for you just to be worried about your code implementation instead of environmental problems. Let's check this out, then get a drink and let's begin. <laughs> Before moving on, please don't forget to press the like button. It helps me a lot with the work I've been doing in this channel. This content took me at least a month to gather all the information and put the environment to work. So I really need your help to reach more people. Please share it on your programming groups, your company's channels, and with your friends. I'm sure they're gonna love to know how to create a JavaScript runtime from scratch and how Node.js works behind the scenes. You can also suggest what you wanna learn by commenting here on this video. If you are not a subscriber yet, subscribe now so you won't gonna miss all the content I've been producing here, all right? In this channel, I've been creating a lot of experiments and trying to make something that we haven't seen on the internet yet. For example, my video about implementing the WebSocket protocol in JavaScript was the first content on the internet teaching it and it has been wild. Look how many people have already watched it. A few people know that I've been working 100% of my time producing content. I sell premium training courses about JavaScript, I have a huge newsletter, I run sponsored workshops for companies and much more. I know that there is a lot of content for people who are beginning the journey in JavaScript, but advanced content is rare, thus it's hard to evolve when you reach a certain point in your career. I gather most of my personal questions and start researching and creating experiments. And as I said to you, I'm a JavaScript developer, not a C++ developer. So experience it, C++ developer, please don't judge me, all right? <laughs> this video is about the most challenging experiment I've ever faced in my life. I wanted to recreate the Node.js platform from scratch, compile libraries, write the source code in C++, and actually prove in practice whether all concepts I've heard about Node.js system are actually true. Spoiler alert, it's not all true. <laughs> I'm a very curious person and I started making questions like, what's the reason behind so many JavaScript runtimes appearing this year? 
You may have heard about Dino, Bun, Cloudflare Workers and others. Just so you know, it's becoming so popular to write your own JavaScript runtime that there is a community group made to provide a space for JavaScript runtimes to collaborate with each other, sharing APIs or improving interoperability between them. Well, this led me to questions. First, how hard is it to create a JavaScript runtime? Should I create a JavaScript compiler? What are the steps to build an experiment that recreates such an amazing project as Node.js is? The first struggle I had was understanding what was a JavaScript runtime. Is it an interpreter or compiler? Do people build compilers from scratch or they use production-ready JavaScript runtimes that run on browsers such as SpiderMonkey on Firefox, Scrollfish on Safari or V8 on Chrome? A JavaScript runtime is where JavaScript code string is interpreted and executed. So if you are using Chrome's V8, then V8 is the actual JavaScript runtime. If you create a C++ program that sends strings to a JavaScript runtime and prints the result, it's also a runtime, even though you haven't created the interpreter itself. To understand how Node.js was made, I started looking at the Node.js GitHub repository, looking for the V1 branch, trying to check how Ryan Dahl implemented the first proof of concept for Node.js back in 2009. And I noticed, my friend, an interesting thing. Node.js is actually a proxy to Chrome's V8 engine, a tool that extends V8 behavior and empowers it. V8 is written in C++, so you send a string to the V8 API and it executes like an evolve on your code. Surely I'm oversimplifying the whole Node.js system here. Node.js does actually a lot more things behind the scenes, but let's focus now on the JavaScript code evaluation part, all right? Searching about Dino, you may find this video where Ryan Dahl speaks about things he regrets while writing Node.js and how he's gonna fix them by building Dino. And you know what they have in common? Behind the scenes, Dino is still sending JavaScript code to V8, evaluating the string as Node.js do. Bun is the one on hype at the moment. The benchmark reports say it's way faster than Node.js and Dino. And you know what Bun does to run JavaScript? It gets a JavaScript string code and sends it to a JavaScript engine. Bun actually uses JavaScript Core, the JS engine also known as Scrollfish that I mentioned before. It is used on Apple Safari browser, whereas Node.js and Dino use Chrome's JavaScript engine V8. All right, so how could Dino or Bun assume that they are better than Node.js if they are a proxy to send JavaScript code to a JavaScript engine? What makes them special is how they control the data flow going back and forth from the JavaScript engine and surely how they handle operating system tasks. Imagine that you sent a code to the JavaScript engine and it returned a huge string. Dino uses Rust and Node.js use C++ to parse the string and cut it into pieces so they can call back JavaScript functions via V8 API. The algorithm they use to import modules parse and process data before finishing attacks is what makes them faster than other competitors. Bun is interesting as it uses a not so popular program language called Zig, thus it helps on speeding up tasks on the platform. I took a look at the source code and honestly I found it very complex. They say on the docs that they use the JavaScript core engine instead of V8 because memory handling is better there, but it's also hard to use it. Even though Dino, Bun, and Node.js are extensions to JavaScript runtimes, they are also considered JavaScript runtimes as they interface other tasks rather than interpreting JS code, such as handling files, OS processes, threads, timers, and much more. Now that I gave a brief introduction to the current JavaScript runtimes, I'll go back to create our own JavaScript runtime. Oh, finally. After researching a lot, I found this video where the author creates a C++ program, reads a JS file and sends it to the V8 engine and gets the raw result from it. In the end, it acts like a V8's hello world example. Anyway, I wasn't able to run the examples from this video as the V8 he was using was compiled to run in a Linux 64 bits and my computer is a MacBook M1. Uh, with different architectures, you need to compile binaries to different targets. 
That's why I prepared the demo for you on a Git pod with the whole environment ready there so you won't have problems executing demos from this video. Ooh, very nice. I know that I've been speaking a lot about the V8 engine. However, Node.js and other JavaScript runtimes are much more than just extensions. They are powerful systems that help us to build and scale applications. Going back to the idea of recreating the Node.js project, we should ask ourselves, what is Node.js? Node.js is a system built into three main components, Chrome's V8, JavaScript engine, LibUV, and a C++ layer. As I told you, the V8 engine is responsible to interpret your JavaScript code and execute it. Although it does much more than it, it actually translates your JavaScript code to C++ object instances. You're gonna see that on our demo. It will be able to access JS objects in C++ classes and interact with them. The most interesting thing for me is that console.log doesn't exist on V8. Oh my God. If you call this function, you get an error of the console is undefined. Crazy, isn't it? Console.log is not JavaScript. In Node.js, it's actually a C++ function that prints out arguments. V8 can handle only what is on the ECMAScript specification. So promises, classes, function, variables, and other JS code you can use there. However, for example, neither set timeout or set interval is not part of the JS specification. Thus, V8 doesn't know what they are. Here's a piece of code I used to create my own console.log implementation. I actually call it print as I didn't want to create an object console and add a function log. After I create this print function, I'll inject it into the global JavaScript context. And here things get interesting. Every time I call this print function that I just implemented on C++ land, the engine will understand it as a JavaScript function and actually call my function built from C++. Oh my God, mind blowing, isn't it? That's why I call Node.js as an extension for the V8 engine. Whatever function V8 doesn't have, you can implement it on the C++ side by yourself. Now you can think of how modules like FS, Crypto, HTTP, NET, child process, and other modules that only exist on Node.js were built. They are just C++ functions that extend the V8 behavior. That's how Bun and Dino get the advantage of it, as they handle those modules differently than those previous implemented in Node.js. As I said, neither set timeout, set interval, or set image 8 exist on V8. Those are timer functions and they are async functions handled by a very non-library. And here we go to the next piece of the Node.js system, the libuv. Libuv is a C library that empowers Node.js to create async functions, threads, timers, child processes, event loops, and much more. On the docs, it says that Actually, LibUV was made to help Node.js, but you can use on Lua, Golang, Python, and other programming languages. Well, the event loop is the key in the Node.js core to make it so powerful. Every time we have an async operation, let's say a set timeout function, LibUV will make this function run in background and then call the callback you've provided. Let's say a set timeout function. LibUV will make this function run in background and then call the callback function you've provided. This acts as similarly to games, a while loop who keeps asking if any change has happened and if it should call any function later. This is also known as the single threaded part of the system. Even though you can create threads using LibUV, when a task that's working on a thread has finished, it will send back a message to the event loop to keep the order of the execution, preventing threads from conflicting with each other, causing deadlocks. In summary, that's how Node.js can work with multi-threads using the worker threads module. Every time a task has finished, it will send a message back to the event loop, and the event loop will call its callback and remove the function from the queue. Okay, that's a lot of information, right? V8 is the engine that interprets JavaScript and can call 
custom C++ functions, and libv is the library that provides the event loop and other capabilities, such as threading and performing and seeing tasks on the operating system. The last part of the Node.js is what I call the C++ layer controller. Imagine the following pipeline. You execute a C++ program and send a JS file as an argument. This is executed by a C++ program, what I call the C++ layer or a controller. You read this program and get the content as a string. This is also executed by your controller. You send the string to a V8 engine and transform the JS code into C++ objects. This is the V8 evaluating your code. Then you wait for events, timers, processes, and others to be completed. LibUV will act a while through asking for new and processing events for you. LibUV finishes the tasks and calls back to the given C++ custom function. Now your controller is in the game again. From the C++ custom function, you invoke the JS function given on the callback on the request from the V8 API and you respond back with results. That's it. With those concepts, you are ready to create your own JavaScript runtime following the same system. Bye. Hey, 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 wait. One thing that you may have been asking you, what about promises? Well, promises are not actually async functions. They wrap functions and give us an object to check whether the async function has finished or given some error. As promises are part of the ECMAScript specification, you can send it to the V8 and it will interpret and fulfill results using the V8 microtask system. Notice here in the code, I'm still using the callback approach. What I did was wrap my callback with a promise object, which will be fulfilled when my custom C++ function invokes my callback. In the end, it's a function to help us wait for callbacks in a fancy way, and that's gold for us. But before moving on, please leave your like here in this video. I've spent a long time building this content just for you, and that's unique content on the whole internet showing you how you can understand such complex subjects in practice. I left here on the video description a bunch of links for you to follow me after this video. If you like this content, take some screenshots and publish them on your social media. Mention me and what is your opinion about it. I will repost everyone who publishes it, alright? Consider joining our Telegram channel. There I'll send you my content in first hand so you won't gonna miss anything. I've also left here the link for my brand new training course teaching about Node.js streams in practice. This one, many people are falling in love with the course grade and I'm sure you're also gonna like it. Yeah, my friend, this content is in another level and it's time to build our own Node.js JavaScript runtime. What are the Node.js system three main components? Yes, you're right. V8, libv, and a C++ layer. Then, let's get started by setting up the V8 library. If you go to the V8 docs, you see a tutorial about how to make your first Hello World using the V8 engine. However, I struggled for two weeks to compile it on my machine. The tutorial was meant to work on 64-bit CPUs, and my Mac has an M1 processor, so it never worked. Then, I found this article from a fellow Node.js contributor, who wrote about compiling it to M1 architectures. Well, I was able to compile the V8 and run tests directly from the source, but the V8 doc said that I needed a binary called V8 monolith that this article doesn't generate. Well, <laughs> now I was back to the beginning again. <laughs> I almost gave up, my friend. Just so you know, by the time I'm recording this video, it's been almost a month working on building this demonstration for you. Oh boy. However, after a lot of trials and mixing what they saw on the docs and the article, I was able to make it run on my machine, finally. I'll tell you, my friend, I screamed so loud when it worked here that I think my whole neighborhood must have heard it. <laughs> All set, I was able to run the V8 example. Now it was time to compile the libuv. I don't know why, but the V8 was being built to 64 bits and libuv was to ARM64. And I would never put them together as it throws an error showing different architectures for the binaries to work together. After spending a few more days, few more days, I figured that the problem was homebrew. Just in a matter of curiosity, if you have an M1 MacBook, you can run brew install S. 
in the name of the package. And this S means build from the source. So I recompiled all the dependencies again and finally both packages were working simultaneously. The first complaint I have is that V8 has almost no docs. I was learning by reaching developers out, browsing on the code, the V8's unit tests and more. It was really painful. I'm a JavaScript developer and I know almost nothing about C++, so I started searching for example and I really had a bad time doing it. Thanks to Anna Hansen and Colin Rigg for helping me figure out the C++ struggle I had in the LibUV. But I'd say the person who really unblocked me on a test was Santi Gimeno. Santi is a core committer on the LibUV and Node.js projects aside from other open source projects he maintains. We used to work together at the Node source and he has been working with V8 and UV for a long time. I've spent at least one week trying to sync a function between LibUV and V8. Hopefully Santi was able to help me change a few lines of code and explain to me during the phone call. Oh my God, it helps. A lot. <laughs> As I said, I already built the whole working environment on a Gitpod. Gitpod is a platform that lets us have a VS code online with everything installed there. So you have all the dependencies ready for you in a matter of seconds. Ah, and you won't need to pay anything nor put your credit card there. You create an account or just log in with your GitHub account. In case you want to compile binaries to run on your machine, I left the instructions on the readme file. I call this project Capivara BR. A capivara or capybara in English is a very common animal known here in South America. I chose it to share a bit of Brazilian culture with you. <laughs> Although by the end of this class, you'll be able to rename it and call as you want, all right? I'll now open the GitHub repo and start my Gitpod env to get review. Are you excited to write your own Node.js JavaScript from time? Then let's begin. All right, I left here on the video description the repository link. So you should go there and you should actually leave your star here, right? This will help me a lot. All right, so here I actually have some branches here. I created a template which have all the templates we're gonna use, but I told you, the binaries for V8 is really big, it's like two gigabytes or four gigabytes, and I cannot uh, put it on my GitHub. However, we can use the Git pod environment I just created for you, all right? So here I put the link and I put some instructions for you, but we're gonna do it together, right? So first of all, let's open the Git pod snapshot. As I'm logged in already here on my account, it won't ask for logging and anything else. You can log in with your uh, GitHub account and uh, you're gonna see the same page. I'm, I'm here now, all right? Perfect. So first of all, let me increase the zoom here. Uh, it has some error here, but let's ignore first. And without saying anything, we should open the Capivara project now. And notice that we have a file here called start. So I'm gonna run start just to check if the project is working fine. This time I'm using Nodemon. Nodemon is very uh, used on Node.js to watch files, right? So I'm gonna use the same thing to watch for C++ files or even other JS files and other extensions as you can see here, perfect. All right, so we just saw a hello world here, but I don't know what this means yet, all right? Let's, let's go to the files. Well, first of all, we can see here on the start file, I just created some script to download Nodemon and Ccache, which are uh, dependencies for our files, all right? So here I have Nodemon watching for all these files. Every time I have some changes on these files, I'm gonna execute make, and then I'm gonna execute a binary. Ooh. So let's try doing this without uh, our node mon. So first of all, I'm gonna run make. Oops, I have to be on the Capivara project. I'm gonna run make. So make is trying to create a, a Bing page here. And then we can see that at Bing, we have some 
uh, binary is there, all right? Which shouldn't be there. Let's remove it so I can explain what they mean, all right? So let's run make again. And now we have the bin with only the capybara binary, all right? Perfect. So if we run capybara only from bin, we have like a command such as node, all right? So I'm gonna run this and I'm gonna see an error, all right? So I didn't put too many uh, error handlers here. Although you can see that we have a JavaScript file here which has print, ooh, print. But let's try running with this file. So index.js and now we see hello world. If I change to two, what means that we, our JavaScript code is changing? Perfect. All right. Well, before going to our current implementation I just made here, let's check it out the examples. So I think it, it will be easier to, to understand each step or each component uh, separately, and then we can put them together. All right. All right. Well, here on the README file, I put some ideas of, of what we are doing, what we are installing what versions the V8 is using, what version LibUV is using, uh, whether you want to install it by yourself. So here are all the scripts I used to install here on the Git pod. Mm, what else we have here? We have examples, right? So how do we run examples? If you go to the readme file here, you can see that I put some section here showing the examples. So uh, you can check the name, all right? And we're gonna run without the extension. So let's open the terminal again. Well, I have three terminals already. All right, so here uh, I'm gonna run make and one name from these examples. So I'll put, by example, let's see UV timers. UV timers, I actually compile them and I run the whole code. So in case you want to understand how UV, the set timeout works there, you can go here and check all the implementation. Ooh, very nice, easy. So here I'm creating a for loop, creating a timer and starting a timer and waiting for V8 to run. So what this means is we are creating set timeouts, right? Scheduling uh, async functions here, and the uh, UV run will actually wait for those events and then try to fulfill them all and then claim from the queue, all right? UV run is actually our event loop that we use in the Node.js until nowadays. Ooh, very nice. This is being exciting, right? Well. What if we want to create threads? Well, how cool is it? Using LibUV, we can create threads with just two lines of code, all right? So, same thing. If you want to run this example, you can run make UV threads. I'm gonna put the zoom a bit more larger. And then we can see the whole program working, and then we can have this on the, the folder bin, all the binaries we just wrote, all right? Well, the last one I'm gonna show you, it's the uh, UV Hello World. This one is maybe a more exciting one. So uh, this actually was copied from the uh, V8 Hello World example there. I just adapted here, removed some unnecessary code. But let's check it out what we need to create our V8 platform. First of all, we have to initialize the V8. We have to create params, which I don't know which it is. I have to create scopes and see, there's a whole life cycle here, right? So here I'm just creating a scope. I'm creating a context with an isolate, which I don't know where it is from now. And then I'm executing a and actually a file, right? Remember that I said to you that this is like a, a evolve. Evolve is like this. Evolve, I could use like one plus one, JavaScript code here, and then I can see the result. This is exactly the same thing that V8 is doing behind the scenes. It's getting a, a, a string and then it's executing, it's compiling, and then we can see the result. All right, 
perfect. It's not that complicated, right? <laughs> well, it's not complicated the example, but we're gonna see that we have a lot of caveats that we're gonna try fixing together. Perfect, but where is this print function? Well, print is actually a function, a custom function that I created. I actually shown you before, but for you who just don't remember, I'm creating here a new keyword for JavaScript, right? And then every time I have this keyword, I actually gonna invoke this print function. And this print function, what it does, it goes through all the arguments that we have and use print f from c. All right, this example uh, is already on the V8 docs and so on. All right, perfect. Now we, we know each step separately, all right? And now we can put them together. Let's see what the templates has to, to us. Well, all right, here you understood. Well, I tried to make this as simpler as we can. So uh, as V8 already provide this hello world example, I just try refactoring this, organizing this whole examples so we can try using here, all right? All right, you may have been asking yourself, all right, but where is V8 installed? Where is LibV? So here I created two different folders, all right? And here you can see the monolith, which I told you that we have to generate to use. And actually I copied the include. This include has all the headers we're gonna need to use on our V8. For JavaScript developers who don't know what are uh, headers, they are actually references for functions that are actually on the binary, all right? So on the make file, here on the make file, I'm just uh, using them, all right? And creating a whole, uh, a whole command to use them. So here I create some variables, all right? I'm just exporting these variables and I'm using them here, all right? So they are just lists. So the make file just gonna help us to avoid writing this big <laughs> command line, all right? Nice, nice, nice. And here is the code for the examples. Perfect. All right, now you know where are the dependencies, right? The libuv is the same thing. So you can see here all the git pod information and so on. And what we need now, we need to check out our template code. Perfect. Well, here I created like an index file, which will instantiate the V8 file, the, the library, and then shut down when we don't need this program anymore, all right? Well, this I noticed is just a, a bad practice, but as I said, I'm not a C++ developer. I'm trying just to make it work so you can understand, and I can understand how this works behind the scenes. Perfect. Well, we can see here that we have a C++ file that it's being required from source, all right? So we have three different files here. Well, first of all, here we have the U2. The U2 are functions that I just copied from the V8, all right, from the V8 source code to help us convert strings and use like the error handling they have and then to convert uh, a simple C++ string to a V8 string, all right? I just copy paste this to make our life easier. And then uh, if we go to our Capybara, <laughs> I love this name. Well, let's go, um, let's try seeing where we actually try reading files, all right? So, all right, we have the print function here, all right? And then we can see here that I'm trying to read a file. Ooh, yeah, that, uh, that's what I said to you. We are just trying to read a file and execute it, evaluate it, right? So I created a function here, which is a, a C++ function to read a file, all right? I'm not using libuv here to make it a sync. It's like a sync. This is synchronous, right? Because the first time we just need the file to start compiling our program. So I didn't pay attention and didn't try making this the best file possible, all right? But just make sure that you understand I copy this code from the V8 example as well to make our life easier, all right? Nice. Now we have everything we need to make it work. 
So let's try understand it first. I'm gonna put this here so my camera <laughs> won't make your life harder, all right? All right. Uh, this is actually a C++ function, all right? Which has all the implementation inside it. So this is not a actually good practice to use on C++, but I'm gonna show you how we can do it. Well, the first thing we can notice here is that we have a, an event loop, right? Initializing our project. And then I'm, I have here a function to run the event loop, all right? Simple as that. Perfect. Well, I'm gonna put this here and I'm gonna put the index so we can see the whole uh, life cycle. First of all, we, we use the uh, initialize v8. So let's go to this function, initialize v8. Here, I'm gonna use the same thing I was using on the examples file, all right? So I'm gonna initialize the v8, then I'm gonna initialize vm. So now I have the whole platform, all right? The interpreter, the JavaScript runtime, the v8 there, and then I'm gonna create a context to use our code. So it's like a, I'm isolating this whole code in a box so we can use it in a safe environment. Perfect. So here I'm initializing the V8 and actually just creating these parameters. All right. Nice. After it, we have initialize program and then I have a file name. And see, I'm just getting the first argument. That's not for me. This was really crazy. I was like, oh, this is not that hard that I thought. Right. But the hard part here, I can say you uh, in advance is docs. It's very hard to find docs about it. All right, let's go to the initialize program now. So here, uh, hopefully I put everything in order so you can see it uh, easier. Well, the same thing I was doing in the example file, all right? So here I'm creating a scope, uh, following actually the docs that were there, all right? I won't go further here because I think it's not too relevant for this class. But notice, I'm creating the same print function and uh, creating our isolate. Well, uh, in this class, we're gonna create our thread in our own timeout. So we can bind new functions on the global state or even on objects like console. Console is an object. Dot log is a function called log, all right? Just to make sure you understood. After creating this whole context, we can go to uh, execute script, which is right here for in the private functions context. And now I'm creating a context like in JavaScript, right? Creating some keys here. And I'm reading the file saying what's the context I'm gonna execute it, the file name I'm gonna use it. And then see, I'm actually parsing the whole origin here. Um, and then I'm compiling the code, all right? So using the, the hello world example here. So I have the code, the source code, which is the file. Our file here is just the print, all right? But I can put any JavaScript code I want here. I'm gonna do it with you later, all right? Perfect. After executing this whole code, I'm gonna wait for events. Remember, anytime I have an async operation, I have to wait for results, all right? So we can go to this wait for events and see that is our event loop running there. And actually, uh, like I said, a while true, actually trying to execute all pending events and then it goes away, all right? Well, what if, well, let's see if I want to create like a for loop. So let e, let i equal zero, i less than 100, i plus plus. All right, JavaScript code, all right? But remember, print is my C++ function. So I can do, actually, this. All right, I'm gonna save it, and then I'm gonna uh, make my, my start run. Remember the script I had there to wait for changes. Once I do this, see, my JavaScript code is working. So this is real JavaScript, all right? We can create a lot of other objects and so on. Nice, nice, nice. Perfect. We have 
uh, the template, all right? So we're gonna do a lot more now from our side. All right, just to make sure I think that I told you, uh, what if we try to use console.log? We're gonna see that nothing printed, right? What if I try to use set timeout that my browser just uh, tried me using? What I where if I try using this? We can see nothing happens, right? Or actually, it happens. Eh? Here he's saying timeout is not defined, all right? So now you can understand that set timeout console.log, they are not JavaScript, right? They are C++ projects. Nice. So I'm going to put the hello world back here. You understand the whole thing is working. And then I'm going to just wait and see my hello world again. Nice, 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 nice. All right, so first of all, I'm gonna create a new function called timeout, not set timeout, all right? And I'm gonna put here, let interval equals zero, and let sleep equal maybe 200, all right? So the first parameter, we're gonna receive the sleep, and the other, the interval, and then a callback because it's an async function, right? Because it's an async function, we can use it later. Nice. And then after this finish, I'm going to print here maybe one. And maybe let's try doing some JavaScript code. New date, all right? Date is a JavaScript code to ISO string. All right, if I try running this, we're going to see that nothing happens, right? Our timeout is not defined, so we have a reference error. But let's implement it, right? Perfect. What we should do, I, I actually gonna comment this so we can see some errors in the syntax or other errors. So first of all, let's create our class, all right? So let's create our function, will be our timer at app, all right? So our G++ function. Nice. Well, as I will be handling V8, I will use the uh, V8 header. And then I'm going to do the same thing for UV. All right? This is an import. I'll use the class timer. And this class timer will actually be a static function. So here I need, like, our comma. And for now, I'm going to use only static void, e initialize, all right? And let's actually try checking our examples here. On the examples, we can see on the UV timers that we need a loop to make our timer, all right? So after the loop, we're going to need actually the function, right? So here we have the signature for the function. Perfect. So we are almost there. Almost there. All right. Let's go back to our function and we're going to need an UV loop. All right. So it will be UV loop T and I'm going to call EV loop. All right. And then I'm going to create here a global function. Actually, I go a global variable called loop t and loop. And then I'm gonna pass this ev loop. Actually, loop will be equal ev loop. Nice, 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 nice. All right. After it, we're gonna need a function. Let's see here on the capybara. Uh, on the print function, we have actually to follow the same structure. All right, so I'm going to copy here and paste here. And I'm going to call it timeout. Ooh, this being exciting, isn't it? All right, timeout. So what we're going to need here? Well, let's, let's keep it that way for this first time. So we're going to make this everything work. And remember the print, 
So we're gonna do exactly the same thing for timeout. So I, I will actually copy here and put timeout. Nice. And then I have to import this timeout, right? So how do we import exactly the same thing we did here? So it will be our timer. All right, so as we have the timer there, we should find our function here. Nice, timeout. So timeout, we're gonna need a function here to use, right? So we can instantiate it, create our time instance, timer, timer, all right? And timer dot initialize. And I'm gonna use, actually it's I uppercase. And I'm going to use the full loop, right? Because everyone is going to follow the same event loop. They are always in the same context here, all right? Nice. And then, after it, look how simple is it. We're going to use timer.timeout. Save it, and let's check our, uh, our terminal here. So... Timer.timeout doesn't exist in this context. Initialize. All right, I forgot something here. I have actually to define that those functions are public. So I'll just save it. It actually has auto save, right? Nice. Our hello world is back working. And then now I'm going to keep my my timeout. So as I have this new keyword, we shouldn't have any error here, all right? And now we're gonna try getting those arguments. So the first is the sleep, the second is the interval, and the third is actually our callback. Nice. Well, how do we get these values? Nice. First of all, we're gonna need uh, to get the isolate. The isolate is actually our uh, context on the V8 from the arts.getIsolate. Nice. After it, I'll, I'm gonna need the context. Remember? Context. And then I'm gonna get from the isolate and as it's an pointer. So here I, I don't think it's showing the whole um, IntelliSense, but that's fine. I'm gonna use get current context, and then, let's see, has no member, does it mean isolate? Oops, it's uh, get current context. Nice, then everything should be working. Perfect, now I have the context. Now I know the isolate I'm in. I'm gonna get the parameters, all right? So I'm gonna call it int 64t delay or sleep args zero, all right? And I'm gonna parse it to integer value context, and then I'm gonna use to check it, all right? I'm, I won't go further in the V8 API because it's not the focus of this quest, all right? But you can find more on the docs. Nice, to get the repeat, the interval, I'm gonna use the same thing, but I'm gonna get from one. Nice, perfect. So let's try printing out those values. I'm gonna use printf, which we have used it for our uh, for our console log, right? So printf delay delay LLD because it's in sixty four. All right, it's not an integer. I'm gonna use repeat. Oops, it's actually percentage. The same thing, the same data type. And then I'm gonna break a line here and then I'm gonna pass those values, all right? This is template strings. We used to use a lot of this in JavaScript before. All right, so what happens here? 
Ooh, well, this is long. LLD in 64. All right, we have some warnings here, but everything is working. Right here, we have delay 200 and repeat zero. So let's check it out. Our interval, we can actually name it better, right? So instead, actually the first one, all right. Instead of repeat, I'm gonna call interval. And instead of delay, I'm gonna call sleep. Just to make it easier so we can have those two numbers on the both sides. Nice, we have sleep and we have interval working, all right? Perfect, we have now to get the third argument, which, which is our callback, right? So for the callback, it's a bit, it's a bit harder. We're gonna parse it to a string as UTF-8 value. I'm gonna call, I'm gonna give a name, right? I'm gonna call callback, call, back callback str all right and then i'm gonna pass isolate and then args on two and then now it's easy now we have the printf again it's an string and then we can use our callback string and then we have just to send it as a pointer and then Let's see if it's working. Well, it's missing here. Nice, 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 nice. Now we can see our uh, callback function, right? It's just a string. As I said to you, it's like evaluation, evaluating our code as we demand. Nice, nice, nice. Well, what do we need now? Now we need to create our callback. If we go to our timers again, we can see that it waits for a callback function that receives this, uh, this signature, right? So I'm gonna copy this signature, go to our timer, and I'm gonna call it, just remember to put the static, and I'm gonna call it on callback, all right? Because it's a function that is gonna be used as a callback. I actually, I'm gonna call it on timer callback. I think it's better. All right. Nice. All right. Well, going to our example again, we can see that we need these two functions to make it work, right? Perfect. So here I'm going to let a print f. Hey, I was called. All right. Just a function now. And then we should use it as a callback function, all right? I'm gonna remove this printf, as we don't need anymore. All right, we're gonna use those two functions that we were using on our examples, which is init and start, all right? Well, init, we're gonna need a loop. So this loop is actually our global variable here. So we are all set to the loop. And then we should use a UV timer. So instead of passing here a variable, I think we can do something uh, prettier. We can create a struct. An struct is like a class for us to create our data, all right? So here I'm gonna create our timer, would be timer T, and I'm gonna call UV timer, all right? Nice. Well, that's it for now. So let's try instantiating it. So timer, I'm going to call it timer wrap equals new timer. All right. Nice. So as I said to you, we're going to need a function here, which will be as reference, our time wrap, and will be the timer, we just use it here. Nice. Well, we have the timer there. And to start, we're going to use the timer. And then we will have our on timer callback. And after it, we're going to pass our delay, which will be the slip. And then our interval. And then 
don't forget to finish the line. Nice, 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 nice. So let's save it. And when we save it, when we see the results, we should see our callback being called, right? So let's open here. Ooh, there's some error. Was not declared. Did you mean event loop? Before token here, I think I missed something. All right, I forgot that in C++, we have to use the symbol for everything, right? So just save it. Let's see if we have more arrows. So expected, yeah, JavaScript developers, right? We forget every time to use the symbol. All right. Ooh, I was called. Nice. Let's see if I, I can put the sleep for more time, like five seconds. So the hello world, more five seconds, and we should see our print being called. Oh, I put 50 seconds. Sorry about that. Oops. It's 5,000. Hello world, and now five seconds later, nice. Now we have, I was called, nice, nice, nice. Well, we are almost there, right? But notice that our callback wasn't called yet, right? Because we didn't do it. We are just uh, uh, calling uh, a timer callback here, right? So who is calling this is actually UV, it's not us, right? Perfect, perfect, perfect. So now we need to store the function and actually the context to execute, uh, to use them on our callback. Perfect. So here on our struct, I will actually uh, use an isolate. I'll call it isolate. And then I will, I will use our V8. Oops. And actually, we're gonna need a global state. Global state actually means that we're gonna save this object in memory until we need to use it, all right? Otherwise, the V8, we're gonna kill this function for, from our context. Nice, nice, nice. All set, so now we have to just make our part. So first of all, I'm gonna use timer wrap. And then on the callback that we just name it there, I think callback, it's better. So callback, instead of like assigning a new value, I will actually reset this instance because it actually has an instance by default. And I'm gonna use reset. And then I'm gonna use our isolate. And then I'm gonna use, uh, I'm gonna need a callback, right? I'm gonna need a new argument here. Nice. So I actually gonna, I, I won't gonna need this callback in string. I actually need it as a callback, all right? So to, gra to grab it as a callback, we can use auto callback args2. I actually, I'm gonna write the type so you know what is there. So local, this means it will only work on our current uh, context. And then I could check if this callback is actually a function, right? Is function. So if the callback is a function, we're gonna keep doing our stuff. Otherwise I'm gonna return it, all right? So I'm gonna print F callback not declared and then we stop doing anything in our our timers will still working fine now that we have this variable we can actually use it and make a cast we can actually convert this data to a function so s v8 function 
And don't forget to use the symbol to end the line. Nice. And then uh, we can have a data there. So the UV needs some object here to pass the data. So we can actually time ripe and use our UV timer dot data. All right, this dot data is actually a data on our UV timer. This type created by UV needs to be fulfilled with some data. And the data is actually our project, right? So I'm gonna do a cast here and use our timer wrap. Nice, <laughs> very crazy stuff we are doing here, nice. <laughs> but it, hopefully it's gonna work. Perfect, after it, I'm gonna use data because it's an instance, right? So this is why we are using this sentence. Actually, we don't need to change it. It's just this one and we can send the value here. All right, let's check our terminal to see if there is there any error. So the callback is already not declared. So it means our index is not sending a proper callback. One, zero, one, two, it's right. Oh, it's a function, right? So I should put not. If it's not a function, the callback wasn't declared. So if I remove this one from here, we should see that error, right? Let's see. Ooh, well done. Let's keep the callback because we want to be called after it. Nice. Let's go now to the callback, right? Now we need to get our data and call this function, right? Our JS function that was sent to the C++ land. Perfect. I'm gonna close this one for now. And now we're gonna start making crazy stuff right here. So our timer wrap will be actually a parse, right? We are parsing back our data and our handle dot data. Remember that we just sent the data here, all right? So this is how we are gonna get the handle, right? Because our timer is actually a timer on UV. After it, we should uh, start changing our, our values, right? So I'm gonna use V8 isolate to get our isolate from our timer wrap isolate. For the context, same thing, local v8 context context isolate get current context. Exactly the same thing we did here, right? Exactly the same thing. Now we just enter on a context and now I can ask if an isolate is dead so if the isolate is dead, uh, means that we did something wrong, right? So I'm gonna just print F here. Uh, isolate is dead and return. We stop everything if the isolate, our current VM in our V8 instance is dead, is not working anymore. We just stop processing. Otherwise it doesn't make sense, right? Perfect, now we can just we can actually grab our callback function. So I'm gonna use local v8 function callback. And then I'm gonna use v8 local v8 function. I could have used just auto here, right? But I, I want to show you the types as well. v8 function, all right? And then I'm gonna use new. So I'm gonna create a new function from an isolate. So isolate, and then the second parameter is our timer wrap callback. With it, we can check if we have actually a callback there. So now imagine if I do this, callback, call, I pass our context, I send values there, so I'm gonna use undefined to our isolate. And I'll pass here zero, 
and new. Let's see if our function is already being called with it. So I'm going to grab here again. There's some problems. Is that, is that here I should use for the reference? Uh, callback was unused. So I think we put five seconds. I'm going to use 200 only. 200 only. And notice that I'm not using commas here, right? Um, segmentation thought. Mm, this is not being used. All right, so we should write the whole thing. Perfect. So first of all, this will return a Boolean for us. So I'm going to grab the result from the callback and put it on a function. So I'm going to actually put on a variable, right? So I'm going to use local v8 value. Everything's a value here. And result. All right. And then I'm going to use to local. And I'm going to send it as a reference. And... All right, let's see if it works now. It's saying, all right, I'm ignoring the value and I still have segmentation thought. Nice, all right. Well, first of all, it's saying that I'm not using the return value. So I'm gonna grab it on an if. And if it's okay, so okay, the callback succeeded. else we know that something happened, all right? So some exception happened, and, and I'm not treating these problems, all right? Okay, I think the problem is here already, but let's see how the code changed. Still, we have some problems there, nice. Uh, what I'm going to do is to return our callback function in... Uh, in another function. So I'm going to use v8 handle. Oops. v8 handle. And I'm going to have the same v8 value. All right? And I'm going to call result as an array, right? So to create an array in C++, we can use just in the keys like this. Undefine it. I'm going to use my isolate. And then I'm going to use that function from u2 that is our v8 string, all right, to parse a string. So I'm going to parse maybe hello world. And then we can use this way. And now, as we have two parameters to return, I'm going to send here where it's new the result, all right? I'm gonna put in the same line and the if in the other line so we can see the difference, right? And then here we can say how many parameters it will have. So it's two. So our callback, remember, uh, we have error or result. So our error will be undefined and our result will be hello world. All right, let's see if it works now. Well, segmentation fault. Oh my God, this error is so generic, right? Well, I notice mm, we are trying to use the isolate, but we never pass this value, right? So on timer up, isolate. We receive the isolate. Let's check this out now. Ooh, very nice, my friend. Well, 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 well. What if we just use it inside it? And I'm going to use like three in a different time and three just to see if it's working. And my hello world will have when it started, right? So let's see. Nice, and we can see that our values are changing a bit here, right? What if I put here a thousand? Yeah, 
Nice. Why, why this one are executed at the same time? Because they are in parallel, right? If I do this one after another, we can see one, two, and three working together. One, two, three. Woo! Very nice! Well, I was talking to you that promises are just async wrappers, right? So let's find out if it's actually true. Um, I'm going to create set timeout function. All right. I'm going to receive uh, milliseconds and a callback. And I will call our timeout function. Our timeout function receives first the sleep and the interval, right? Oops. So it's sleep, interval, and callback. So for the set timeout, the interval is always zero, right? And the sleep is our milliseconds. And for interval that we haven't tested yet, it's the opposite. So it's our milliseconds here and our sleep zero. Nice. Well, this might work, but I can go further. I can try creating a promise on it. So, set timeout async. We're going to receive our function, new promise, resolve. In our set timeout, oops, set timeout. And I'm going to have our handle. Actually, we're going to have the milliseconds first, right? And then our callback. Nice. For interval, for interval, I think it doesn't make sense because it will be resolving at, at any time, right? Almost there, my friend, almost there. Well, now we can try doing something complex. We can create a closure with async await, so async function. And I'm going to call it right away. And notice what crazy thing I will do. So here, new date to ISO string. All right. Uh, and then I'm going to call like waiting a sec. And then I'll wait, set timeout async, oops, that we just created here. So, a thousand, just for a second. All right, I'll do the same for a second again. And then I'm going to call finished. Now we should see all these functions working and notice that I'm using async and await. Oh, very nice, my friend. Oh, if I change here for two. We can see that our waitings are working fine, even though on uh, promises. Promises are just wrappers behind the scenes. Well, we have a lot of objects that try helping us to solve them better. But yeah, that's all. Well, the last thing we're going to do today is, I promise it's the last thing, we're going to create a thread, all right? We're going to create something that's going to run in background, but in another thread, so we can see this actually working. Let's see it. Well, we can have C++ threads, as I made some examples here, all right? You can find this there. Or we can use UV threads. So as Node.js use UV, we're going to use the same idea. So there, inserts, let's create thread. Well, as I know, we're going to use something closer to this. I'm going to just copy this timer and the UV function, all right? And then I'm going to call it thread. Nice. So I'm going to remove the timer. And actually, I won't do anything because we are because we are almost two hours. Nice, 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 nice. Well, my thread, right? So I'm going to have public functions, which will be static, void, run, thread. And then I will have static void thread. 
okay? Just it for now. Uh, on the timer, we know which is our callback for the UV. So I'm going to use the same idea for the thread. And if you try looking here, uh, it receives a function with this signature, right? So I'm going to paste it here. All right. Well, on the capybara, we're going to do the same thing for our thread. So I'm going to call thread here, and I'm going to import the thread function. Uh, our script just stopped working because I, I was trying to import a module. doesn't exist in this context yet. So to pass our function to our thread, it's going to be easier than our timer. We're going to use my thread, and actually I will use uh, thread. All right, so now I'll, I'll just keep our software working here. Uh, default loop. I think I might forgot some signal to close the line. Let's see. Here it seems to be right on Fred. Here. I always forget. Nice. Everything's working. Uh, on the index, I'm going to create Fred and maybe any number. 10. Just to, to see if our new keyword is there. All right, nice. And now it's calling our thread, right? So what we can do, we can actually do exactly the same thing we did here. All right, I'm gonna just copy paste so we save time. To get the isolate, the context, and the, the counter, I'll call it counter. All right, so to use to use it, we're gonna use the struct UV thread task ID. And then I'm gonna use UV thread create. I'm gonna send the task ID and then our run thread. After it, I'm gonna send our counter as reference. All right, let's see if it's executing. Print F, executing. Ooh, see that it's executing, right? But we have our other functions running there and it's not actually uh, trying to close, close it. However, let's try doing something like harder here, right? Well, I'm gonna grab our counter so it's gonna be the same parts we did uh, before. Hard, oops, equals. Actually, it's here. The counter, and then I'm gonna do a while counter. Counter, minus, minus. Uh, we're gonna have a printf will be dot and we're gonna use the UV slip, which is an async function to sleep a bit, like our timeout, all right? And then our printf done running our thread. And see, let's see how it's working. So every time it goes on our loop here, it's just gonna send some dots. Nice, but it was so fast. Uh, let's try doing something like bigger, like a hundred iterations. And actually, our, yeah. And now you can see that our dots here are not, uh, I'm not waiting for the other async functions, right? We can see they are printing in one side and we can see the other values in another side. However, if you want to join that thread, if we want to actually maybe merge them, we can use thread join and we can send our task ID. 
And now we can see that our, our function will execute first one side and then another side. Let's see it. See, our thread is working, right? And it goes, and it just finished working for some secs, and we could see our task finishing. Let's try doing less. Let's try in 10. Oh, we can see waiting a sec and just finish working. And then we could see it's actually executing our code again, right? I think it would be better just to put some dash n here. Nice, 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 nice. So we have everything running. We have threads, we have timers. We are using uh, LibUV, we, we are using V8 to compile our code. If you want, I have actually an example here to create like a, a complex code. I'm gonna just copy paste it, but it's already on the video description if you wanna take a look further. It's, a, it's like a, a DB code to see if our JavaScript is actually a JavaScript code, man. So here I have our set timeout function, our DB creating some database, executing some complex functions here using map and a lot of stuff. Perfect. So here I have the DB. And let's see if our DB is working, right? So I'm just copy and paste to see if it's actually JavaScript, if I'm not lying to you, right? So here I have a, a function that is starting our DB, inserting a data, finding all, removing all, and uh, seeing some results. So what's going on here? We have all Eric, it should be there. After we have, uh, a uh, yeah, this all is actually this function. After it, we remove them all, and then we can send print. Nice, 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 my friend. Now it's all working. Uh, just notice a thing here. Uh, if you want to call back your function from a, a thread, it's a bit more complex, all right? So you should be, you should research a bit more. But as we are like out of time here, I won't go further on this concept. But look how nice is it, my friends. You just created the whole concept behind the Node.js in back 2009. How cool is it, my friend? In this class, you are able to recreate the Node.js project using the fundamental concepts in practice. You understood what's the main role of the main components such as LibUV, V8, and the C++ layer to manage the data flow between those libraries. Now, I would like to invite you to write your own feedback here in the comments and suggest what else should I bring here to this channel. This video was the hardest one for me, but hopefully I was able to prepare the whole environment for you on a Git pod and you'd see in practice how a JavaScript runtime works. Well, this application will need more and more features. You can implement your own file system module in C++ layer or even implement your own HTTP module to create web servers and much more. Please share this content with all people you know. I think they will love to get to know how the internals in the Node.js project works and how to tackle the main questions about it. Ufa! I hope you found this class useful and don't forget to check the content in English playlist here in the channel. I've been building a lot of new content and I'm sure you're gonna like it. Comment below what you wanna see in the next videos and please send this video to all people at your work, your friends and your study groups. I'm sure it can inspire them as well. I hope this content has exceeded your expectations. Subscribe to this channel so you won't gonna miss all the content I've been creating here. I'm Eric Wendel and I will see you on the next video. Ah, <laughs> shit. I prepared a complete cloud environment. And a lot of C++ as there. I'll start building the project with you. And I, that there's a community group, that, that is, that there is a community group. And it executes. Like, 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 like
Searching about Dino, you might find as the interface other task rather than interpreting. And then it gets the results from it. It acts like a V8 real world. Functions to help control the how dollar. V8 can handle only what is on the ECMAS specification. Ah, specification. That's how Bun and Dino. Oh boy. Complex. Yeah, my friend, this content is in another level. Fuck it. This content is in another level, and it's time for you to build your. Another level.